Hey guys, uh, my name is Colter. I'm a producer from uh, around Cologne. And uh, today we're reading between the lines of my track Search and Discover, which is going to come out soon on my uh, own label, Cold Tracks. And yeah, I'm going to show you a few things that I've done in the track, including uh, my use of the vocoder uh, yeah, in my own way, so to say. Please excuse me when I um, just um, zap through the track without uh, explaining everything in detail, but I'm not really used to um, explaining everything when I um, go through a track. So um, yeah, be gentle with me. Let's start with the kick, how I most of the time start my tracks. Um, I've gathered over the years uh, quite a big sample base of kicks that I've stolen from everyone. Um, sometimes I even do them myself, but it's a very rare occasion. So, um, yeah, the, the kick is pretty, pretty simple. It's a four to the floor kind of beat and uh, it only gets interesting with the top loop that I found, uh, which is this one here. And it is, yeah, is it like an A to eight? I can't really identify it too well, but should be. Um, and um, yeah, I just mainly took this break that I found or this, this loop, top loop, um, cut the low end from it. Didn't really do anything else to it, except for uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, cut the snare that I found in the loop and um, let it do a little variation towards the end of the bar. Um, to keep it interesting, of course, and to make it instead of a four bar loop, make it an, a 16 bar loop. Should have uh, conjuncted it. Yeah, make it a loop now. And um, yeah, along with that, with the top loop that I found, um, I also found a little perk, uh, which is doing a little rhythmical and also melodic kind of thing on top of it. some class or something, however you say it in English. <laughs> yeah, and along with the top loop, it uh, already makes like a very strong bass for the, for the track that I started. Um, so yeah, this is how I approach the track in the first place. These are probably the first five minutes uh, when I start something and get into the zone, hopefully. Um, and it already led me into a kind of a direction that I wanted to do something more like electro-ish. I think the 808 has a certain characteristic that already calls for these kind of bass sounds, uh, which you're going to hear later now, or now, uh, which I made with a plugin called the Diva. Yep. A bit of an electro-ish sound because the resonance is, uh, is doing quite a good job here as well. If I crank it up, it's going to sound like this, which is not too much, of course. Um, yeah, but it gives the, the, the kind of electro sound character to it, I think. So along with the drum break that I was doing earlier, uh, it's sounding like this. And again, I like to do some variations towards the end of, a, of an 8 bar or 16 bar loop. Um, so every once in a while the, the, the bass would do a little variation at the end, which is in this case, case just going up a little bit like this. Subtle things, but I think it makes a difference in the, in the, in the whole thing, in the whole character of the track. Um, and also um, the notes change quite drastic then at the end of the 16 bar loop to this one as well. So it goes up. Yes, and uh, that was the basic foundation together with the, the bass line. So um, for this track I wanted it, I wanted to include the, um, how do you call these? little toy toy vocal things. I don't know, it's like a talk box or something, if you call it that. Um, but it's like a synthesized um, vocal thing. Uh, it makes these kind of noises. 
it comes out of like a toy thing. I don't know. It, it sounds really cheesy and really crap on its own, I would say. Uh, but I found it in a sample pack. It basically had like all the, the, the letters of the alphabet in there. So um, I wanted to let the whole track evolve a little bit around the music. You know, about searching it, about discovering it, about playing it, you know, about making it. And um, so the main part of it, I wanted to spell music. So I found the M, the U, the S, the I, the C. <laughs> and um, yeah, included it here in the track. So it's along with the bass line and the basic track foundation that I showed you earlier. It sounds like this. U S I C U S I C Music So he spells it um, along the first 16 bars and then at the end of this he spells it out and says music <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I didn't want to just uh, let it go like that. Um, I felt like I should give my, my own voice to it or my own little musical input, singing input, so to say. Um, so because I cannot really sing or I'm not really good at it, I would say, uh, I always kind of hide away in the vocoder area so uh, I can play the notes instead of singing them. So um, let's go into the vocal which I made for it and listen to it very shortly without the vocoder on it to see what the main idea for the track was. There will be no problems. There will be no hate. <laughs> A little bit hippie lyrics. <laughs> yeah, everybody came together here to have a good time. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, apart from the bad singing, I, of course, um, try to um, give a real expression into the, the hisses, the hiss sounds and everything, because later uh, the vocoder has to work with something and you can only do it with like good attacks and everything, you know. So if I would just whisper it, it would not good, be a good input for the vocoder later on. So along with the vocoder that I played in, <clears throat> It sounds like this. There will be no problems. There will be no hate. So I try to really give emphasis to the the p, the the t, and the s, you know, just to give the vocoder something to play with and to have a good carrier. And um, the melody uh, is created with a um, with a very basic synthesizer from Ableton. Actually, it's called just Analog. And the, I didn't even choose a preset, it's just uh, the basic um, main preset that you get when you just open up the analog thing. Um, it could be that it's very loud now, um, if I just show you the, the foundation of the vocoder, but uh, this is it. Let me see if I can turn it down a bit. So this is the thing which I played in and which is going to let the vocoder uh, do the notes later on. There will be no there will be no okay, so um, yeah, um, the notes I just created on the fly, so uh, if I would delete them now, um, I could just try to, to recreate it right now for you guys to, to give you an example. I just need to find out which key. There will be no problems. There will be no hate. Yeah, so whatever I'm pressing now on the keyboard, he's going to sing it in that, um, on that note. There will be no problems, there will be no hate. So yeah, I can make it a chord, I can just make it a single note. The more lower you play it, the more evil it sounds, I would say. There will be no problems, there will be no hate. Like that, for example. Um, yeah, but it shows some higher notes to make, to fit the hippie vocal, <laughs> where everybody's loving each other on the dance floor, of course. Um, so yeah, um, let's go there along. There will be no problems, there will be no hate, yeah, everybody came together here to have a good time. Of course, how it always is in the club, right? And 
everybody came together to celebrate good times, good times. Yeah, the notes of this are these. They're not really played on the on a on the rhythmic of a track, I would say. They're more played in the rhythmic of the vocals, so it may sound like really like everywhere and nowhere. Um, but I try to line it up with the vocal instead of the <clears throat> instead of the track's drums or something, you know. So um, it makes more sense, of course, if I play it now with the track. And if I would just play the, the carry, it would sound like this. You know, because the, the vocal in the end creates the breaks in between and the spaces, so it didn't really matter so much if it was playing already when, uh, when the, uh, the vocal didn't even hit yet. So I hope it makes sense a little bit. Uh, yeah, okay, so that I would say is the, the main foundation of the track and the main idea of it, <coughs> which came together. And I tried to build around this concept a little bit with uh, all the effects, all the sounds. Uh, I used quite a few um, kind of laser and um, yeah, zap effects, I, I call them. Uh, they sound a little bit like this here. bit funky, a bit spacey as well, um, but I think I was listening to the, the Todd Teye uh, track Inspector Norse before, so I wanted to do a track as well which has like a few of these kind of bleeps in there, um, and I think it fits the track really well. Um, yeah, <clears throat> also let's see, how are we, how we going further with it? Um, there are a few pads and synths here and there which support everything, I guess. Um, at the end of every bar, there's a, a reverse pad coming in to kind of finish the bar for me. Uh, it's this here. There will be no problems, there will be no hate. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a reverse pad and I also gave it a slow attack, you know, so it kind of evolves and, you know, and really cuts after, after it's been played instead of carrying on throughout the next bar. And along with that, um, after some time, there's a synth coming in, which is a little bit more, which has the same kind of vibe, but is uh, played a little bit more shorter and with delays and everything on it. Um, and I also really often love to use the amp, just the, the simple amp that uh, Ableton already is offering. I think there are so many great plugins in Ableton which, you know, you can use without having to, to try to discover like 500 plugins to use in a project. Um, because, um, yeah, they already sound so good and, you know, uh, if you choose the right, right sound in the beginning, I guess you don't really need a lot of processing anyway. Um, but yeah, this is the, the, the synth which is later coming on in the track and which is playing a little bit more of a staccato thing on top of the vibes. So the amp is really just... I could have just tried to to a higher or to, to to boost a little bit the the high frequencies of the of the pad, but usually when I try to uh, or I use the amp to uh, to give it a little, little bit of a high tone to it, you know. Um, so if you compare it with and without the amp, without it, it sounds really dull, you know, and really only low endish. And if you put the amp on. It just creates a little bit of a fizziness, you know, to make it a little bit more hearable. Also, if you're listening to it on a, a phone speaker or something, uh, of course, it should be um, listened to on the best speakers in the best club on the world. Um, but sometimes you also want to um, have it sound good on a phone uh, on a phone speaker as well. So, if I exaggerate the the amp, what the amp is doing, I put it on 100% now. You know, and it. 
it gives it a certain character which I already love. So um, yes, that's about the the pet which is coming in, in later. Um, then I always love to use a little bit of a crackly atmosphere. I think it's uh, every everybody in the world who produces music does that a little bit, and just to to give the the track a little bit of a yeah not dirty vibe but to to just create an atmosphere around everything and to glue everything together even though i'm not really a big fan of the the word gluing because uh, for me it doesn't really make sense to glue something together in the track but uh, i think it just creates a good atmosphere around all the elements and give it like a nice space you know um, and it's really subtle, you know, it's at minus 20 dB, so you won't really be able to hear it anyway. Um, yeah, apart from that, uh, let's see. Um, for the intro of this one, oh yeah, um, I have a little bit of a favorite synth that is standing uh, here next to me, the red one in the background, um, which is a Nordlead, and it's it's been with me basically for the my beginnings of uh, making music and I always come back to it you know there's a lot of synths which I rarely used or uh, you know which you know I only used two times or something so definitely not worth the money that I paid for it you know but out of this one I always come back to it if I need like a, a pad or uh, just a atmospherical thing which sits in the background and does its thing so I did it the same in this one and I only needed something for the intro I think you know I want something that just leads to the to main to the main um, rhythm or t theme of a track a little bit and for me uh, a nice pad in the beginning with the Nordly did just that yeah and it's a really subtle thing underneath in the intro So yeah, just a, a small pad opening up a little bit towards uh, the first kind of theme. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, and it's layered as well. I have like a little bit of a bell-ish sound on top, which is this one. You know, it has a lot, a lot of overtones which do their thing, I think. This one as well, I have to say, but uh, a little bit more for the mid-range and just to layer it a little bit and make it more interest interesting, I think. Um, yes, what else is there about the track to say? Um, later in the main break, uh, there are also some big synths coming it in and uh, I used the Diva for it. I'm kind of sick of using this one now because I've used it so much in the past and I want to change things up a little bit. Uh, of course, every once in a while, but um, for this one, it did a pretty good job, I think. And uh, yeah, it was just a finish, finishing touch, I think, uh, that completed the track for me uh, to have a kind of big break. Or it's not even a break, it's just an introduction for the break, but it gives it a more like a melodic um, feel to it. So uh, let's listen to the track at this point with the chords coming in from the diva. Everybody came together here to celebrate So yeah, they only appear, oh no, they don't appear only once, but um, I don't mind if something just uh, occurs once in, once in the track or something, you know. Um, I know that techno is a lot about um, just uh, one element, you know, playing, you know, discovering all the aspects of one element throughout a track or something, but I'm kind of the opposite with my way of doing things, you know, I love just opening up a channel and just uh, having something play once or something, if it adds to the track, you know, 
uh, for me it doesn't matter um, but there are these times and and other times you know I always also love to uh, do a track every once in a while and just try to discover uh, everything that a certain synth or sound has to offer you know from the cutoffs with the resonance to uh, you know just putting phasers or flangers on effects on these you know and uh, yeah showing all their faces throughout the track along with some nice drums of course um, yeah so these were the big synths coming in the break um, they come in a little bit more subtle way later in the track as well um, but uh, also just to give that extra notch um, to the track uh, later there are coming some guitar chops uh, as well <coughs> here and I always like to uh, include guitars I have to say I don't know maybe it's my faith that I had when I was a bit younger of listening to a lot of uh, rock and metal and everything um, but I think like uh, especially guitars along in electronic music have such a I don't know add such a great vibe to it so there are rarely ever uh, occasions where I don't just even or at least try out a few chops of guitars or something um, let's see if I yeah for this one I, I chopped up a guitar loop that I found um, and Ableton already has a, such a great way of um, you know ch chopping up the transients and letting you play around with certain notes which are in the loop already um, so just to show you the, what the loop actually sounded like in the beginning um, let me see if I find it so I don't know if that was caught in the recording since I didn't drag it into Ableton so that was the little guitar loop doesn't really seem like it could fit in an electro-ish track, I guess, but um, I chopped it up uh, and Ableton did that for me, so to say. So, sorry, need to turn that down. Yeah, these are all the chops that Ableton did for me. And uh, usually when the track is just playing, you know, I try to see uh, what kind of fits sometimes and you know just to create a little bit of an extra kind of resonance sound uh, with it so uh, so yeah this is what it came down to let me see what the notes are so maybe i can play them live in for you yeah okay so these are the three notes which i chose And uh, I put just a tiny delay on it and a guitar phaser, also um, Ableton's own stock plugin to put on guitars, obviously. That's why the preset is called like that. Um, so, yeah, let's deactivate this one and then I'll try to play it in a little bit for you the same way I did it in the track. <laughs> Again, just a small little thing which adds to the atmosphere, I think, but uh, that, I think, was the last element, yeah, which is uh, sitting in the track. So yeah, that was my little insight in the studio. Um, I would be looking forward, if you have any questions uh, or comments about it, uh, I'm happy to, to answer them in the, in the comments. So uh, yeah, let me know and um, thanks for, for having me on the, on the channel. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,